Okay, again, I, my apologies. I'm Dr. Jeff Ritter, Program Public Health. Uh, my topic is effective and successful teaching and learning in the online environment. And uh, thank you for your time today and good afternoon, everyone. Um, my research in this topic is, is quite early. So I just wanted to focus initially on, first off, some strategy that I think is relevant for all of us who teach online. The accuracy and uh, strength of the syllabus is probably above and beyond the most important component as it is in any course. The learning management system or what's known as the LMS, um, there are various systems that are used. Knowing and understanding the system is you know, quite frankly, extremely important as well. If it's an online course and it's primarily asynchronous, it's important to include elements of, a, of synchronous content for a variety of reasons that I'll get to in a few minutes. The use of visuals, offering variety, providing clear, concise, and timely feedback, obviously critical. Having virtual office hours, being available for students, uh, encouraging collaboration, and certainly being well-prepared and innovative is very, very important in this, in this process. Connecting with students. Students um, can be very engaged if the, if the professor is uh, flexible and understands that there's a variety of ways to message and connect with students. Be present and available for students as much as you possibly can as a professor. Use technology effectively, and I can come back to that if we have a few minutes. Develop ongoing activities, give students some downtime. Um, sometimes too much information, it's overwhelming for students. We need to back off from time to time. Focus on competencies. Uh, in my field of business and healthcare uh, administration, it's important to, to align the competencies in the course, in the curriculum, in the program, to what the actual, to what the student's actually learning and what's useful specifically as it relates to the industry. Ask for feedback on an ongoing basis from students as much as you possibly can. Share and articulate your vision because I think the students will appreciate that and be as creative with lectures as possible. And sometimes when technology fails you, you have to do the best you can as I'm doing right now. Specifically for student success, students need to schedule time for learning. They need to set aside time um, and really engage and focus on the, the process of learning. Creating goals, staying connected, managing their time, all relevant. Being engaged and present. One of the single biggest challenges for students in an online environment is being engaged. They have some responsibility. The professor has some responsibility. For live sessions, if it's possible, the students should mute their mics, turn their cameras on, and absolutely, again, be present. The engagement and collaboration with other students is vital to success, and there needs to be a focus on learning, not just completing the work, not just what my grade is going to be, not when the semester's over, when the course is over. What can I learn, and what should I be learning? There's an organization in the US called Quality Matters. It's the gold standard for online course delivery. And as you can see on the right side of the slide, there are elements and the pieces of the pie that are critical to success. These are the guidelines that many organizations follow, universities and colleges. And again, it's the gold standard in the United States for what's really important for effective online learning and teaching. You may be familiar with the four pillars of learning, learning to know, learning to do, learning to be live and learning to be. This is, uh, this is the essence of teaching or at least uh, a component of the importance of teaching. It certainly applies to and aligns closely, very closely with online learning. So this is important. The golden rule, um, how you conduct yourself, how you talk to individuals face-to-face, -face, how you wanna convey your message is important. It's hand, it goes hand-in-hand -hand with your online messaging and delivery. So 
It obviously applies to friendships and communications. So the face-to-face -face interactions are very, very similar to what happens online. If you wouldn't feel comfortable saying it to someone's face, you shouldn't type it. Think before you send that message. That goes for both faculty members as well as students throughout the engagement of communication. Couple of, a couple of things that, that's, that are important to remember. And again, my, my research is very early on in the process and I'm looking at a number of different areas of research that I want to expand to. Stay communicative, share your experience, expectations for behavior early and often. Keep those lines of communication open. There are various tools that could be used, whether it's email or an important announcement or even texting or, or phone calls, message boards. There's a variety of ways to communicate. Try a combination thereof that will allow you to connect with students. Keep the course and the activities interesting. Uh, the activities are important. Build activities current issues and events, relevant topics, guest speakers, not only lecturing, there needs to be a, a variety of connectivity for overall success. Yeah. It's important to understand the, the, the relevance and, and again, the importance of pedagogy and technology. So the ped pedagogy is focusing on your teaching style, your skills, various practices, adding the element of technology whether it's auditory or visual, how it enhances the course. When you combine these two together, um, you've, got, you've got a great chance for overall success and great outcomes across the board in almost any learning environment. So some challenges that students face, and this is real and the data and the research tells us, it's isolation. Um, it's, it's unfortunately a lack of motivation. Sometimes the equipment is not effective or up to par for a variety of reasons. There could be technical issues. There's a variety of distractions that occur. Time management is, is an art that needs to be developed by students right from the start. And certainly there are barriers to learning. Certain, certain There may be students with disabilities or special learning needs. So we have to take all of these factors into consideration as we develop our strategies. And we need to know upfront what the issues are. And this comes from the office hours, engagement, asking questions, working in teams, uh, and, and doing the things that are necessary to get your students engaged right from the start. Some solutions, aligning the lesson plan with online learning, and having that strategic element um, connected in a variety of ways. Communicate expe expectations, what you expect, what you require, provide solutions when possible. As a faculty member, as a professor, are you getting to know the student? That takes time, depending on the size of the class and the number of times you meet, but getting to know the student, having the student know you and your background is important. The technology will always be relevant for a variety of reasons. And again, the attention span of your students, you have to gauge that and you have to modify that. And we all need to understand that students do learn differently. Some final thoughts, plan an asynchronous and synchronous mix if possible, that it will allow you to connect with students um, who both wanna be involved want to be on camera, want to join in on the class. And for those who, um, for a variety, variety of reasons, are not joining in, but they still need to be part of, of, of the overall learning process. Build community with, with your students, with other faculty members, with guest speakers, with as much gauge, engagement as possible. Assess the student learning and engagement right from the start and monitor it. Set the parameters, set the norms and guidelines. And by all means, engage, not just lecture. While lecturing is important and relevant, the engagement is vital. So, um, so, so Jim, you have uh, three more minutes, please. Uh, I'm done. Thank you for your time. Um, okay. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank and again, I. Have...